She mixes a little bit of folk, Americana, and country along with some pop and blues. It's Anna Christina Cash on the Music Universe podcast. Oh, hey, Matt. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm good, man. We meet again. We meet again and again. and I, We talk every day. We talk every single day. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's been therapy during this quarantine that we not only get to talk, but we get to chat with a lot of really neat and diverse artists. And today we have one that when you put the name Cash out there, it's synonymous to country music. Obviously, Johnny Cash, June Carter Cash. But she wasn't born a Cash. She actually married into the family. And she's got her own cool vibe going. So let's just present the interview. Anna Christina Cash, welcome to the Music Universe podcast. How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, you know, despite obviously the, the situation with COVID here, I'm just locked down with my family and you know, just doing the best I can to stay positive every day. How about yourself? Oh, I'm, uh, we're doing good. We're doing well. Tell us about, you just released your new album, Shine, and it was recorded at the Cash Cabin, if I read that correctly. Tell us about this process for this uh, new record. So, so Shine um, finally got it out there this week, and um, it's been a process that I've been very proud of. I've, I've been working on it um, at the Cash Cabin studio, uh, which was like the studio of Johnny Cash that he built in the 1970s. My husband, John Carter Cash, converted it into a recording studio in the early 2000s. And I've been working on the project for about three and a half to four years, really, just um, writing the songs, co-writing, getting the right song selection, getting the right mixes, the right sounds with um, just all the musicians, all the talent they put into it. And, you know, everyone that's worked on this record, it's it's been such a, a beautiful process of collaboration. And I would um, classify it pretty much as an Americana album with pop country influences and also a lot of jazz influences. There's kind of like a, the the biggest influence definitely is jazz, I would say, with the Americana country. And when you mention those influences, who are some of the artists uh, behind your music that uh, have influenced you over the years? Yeah, so I, I grew up loving Ella Fitzgerald just because of all of her improvisational melodies, um, you know, just with jazz music, Dinah Washington, Etta James. Um, and then with country music, I, you know, Shania Twain was my thing when I was little and, and Leanne Rimes mm -hmm. and the great Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn. Um, I grew up in the Latin music world as well, um, just being bilingual and having Cuban parents. So I grew up in Miami and my, my first chances that I was given in the entertainment industry was in the Latin music industry when I signed the Latin division of Sony Music when I was um, 15, 16 years old. And people often say that they hear those influences now, even as they sing um, this Americana stuff, definitely. So it's kind of never left in a way. And and I'm really blessed to be able to go between both worlds. I love singing English and Spanish equally as much. Was Johnny Cash an influence on you at all, knowing uh, knowing the lineage uh, now that uh, with John being your husband, was uh, Johnny Cash a part of your household at all? He's very much a part of our household mm -hmm. every day. So, um I'd say more so when I married my husband, he came more into my life because, um, you know, I'd heard of him, I'd heard his music um, and definitely was an admirer of his talent. But um, since it's, I'd say he's in my everyday life now, just being the father of my my husband um, and the grandfather of my daughter, Grace June Cash, um, he's definitely a part of our lives and, you know, as a musician in that family. And Cash Cabin is such an iconic place. What did it feel like for you to actually be in there recording, knowing that uh, Johnny had done that and June had done that as well over the years? Um, I would say it has a very homey vibe. There are definitely great vibes. There, not only Johnny Cash has recorded there, but you know, so many wonderful artists that have left their spirit um, in the walls of the of the studio. So I'd say it's a very homey atmosphere, very comfortable. Um, only good vibes in that studio. Oh, absolutely. And I know you just released the album, but a lot of artists have a lot more time on their hands right now. Has COVID inspired you to write anything new that maybe you might be recording while we're in this quarantine? Most definitely. Um, the next project I want to work on is, is a full-on jazz album. So I want to do original tracks for that, as well as 
um, you know, classic covers, maybe some obscure, maybe some that people are more familiar with. But I mean, jazz has been such a huge part of my life that I've, I've never made a full jazz album. I've only done things with jazz influences. So I definitely plan on writing more um, for that project. Do people expect you because of, and I'm sorry to keep going back to this, but it's so interesting to hear you talk about all these other influences and you're certainly breaking the mold and bringing in all these different influences in your life. When people hear the name Cash, do you think they expect straight country music or straight folk and don't expect that soul and some of those other pop influences? I mean, what's your experience been with with maybe what people expect of you versus what you've been able to wow them with? You know, it's funny because I've always considered myself to be an individual more than anything. And um, I've been a professional in the music industry since I was six years old. I performed in the, the longest running variety show nationally, Sabo Gigante, in, in you know, the world. And I was fortunate to have that experience and to learn from adults as a child. And I was also signed to a major record label as a teenager. So I mean, if people see my, my married last name now and if they expect to hear like a certain kind of straight country music, I'm not blood related to Johnny Cash. I'm, I'm an individual. So so I, I would say, you know, I, I just do what I do and that's it. Well, we love individuality. We love that. And that's what's so fascinating to uh, to me about your story. So sorry if I offended you there with that question. I oh, just... no, no, I'm totally not offended. I'm not offended at all. <laughs> no, I'm but no, it's so, it's so important to just be your own person in this industry. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I believe it's important to just be your own person person i'm sorry i'm so passionate about it but i just you know yeah. i think it's important for everyone to just be their authentic selves and you know really re respect you know respect family respect influences but kind of tell their own story in life and leave their own um, mark on the world and i think it's important to you know as writers we um, delve a lot into what happens internally really and then we just put that out there for people to receive and if we are not our authentic selves, it comes across as um, not genuine. So I, I really make it a point to speak my truth. Yeah, and the folk jazz and uh, rootsy, bluesy music that you're putting out there is definitely different, but uh, I think it's necessary as music tends to now at this point going back to its roots as opposed to the fabricated stuff that we hear all the time from nearly every artist you hear on the radio these days. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, it's so funny how all of those influences kind of meshed up and created this record. I'm, I'm, you know, I when I was writing a lot of the songs, and when I was collaborating, I didn't think, okay, I'm going to write in this genre, or that genre, and I think I want to mix something here. It, it just kind of just happened the way it was. And I kind of just let the song lead the way. If, if the song feels like it's strong, like the message is coming across clearly, um, then, then I think it's worth being told in a story. So I I kind of let the songs guide me throughout this process. Oh, absolutely. And we know that every artist has had their tour schedule interrupted. Do you have anything planned for later in the year at this point, or is it just all kind of up in the air like the rest of the industry? Yeah, so I had a Grand Ole Opry date that was supposed to happen on April the 25th that I hope to see um, postponed and given, you know, the opportunity to, to make that show happen. Um I think just a lot of shows around Nashville I'd like to keep booking. Um, you know, right now, Shine is out digitally, but we hope to put out a physical vinyl and the CDs, the CDs are, the physical copies are being printed. But of course, you know, people are wanting to receive less packages at home. So it's okay that I think that gets delayed, but we'll, we'll continue to place an emphasis on the, the vinyl coming out later. And which I'm really excited about because I love vinyl too. And, um, right now at the moment I am doing Instagram live shows. I'm doing Facebook live shows all the time. Little Facebook shows and Instagram shows keep popping up right now until I'm able to get back into the venues again. How important is the community of musicians in Nashville and elsewhere right now? And how important is it to you? Like you mentioned doing these Instagram lives, these things that come up because of those relationships. How important are those relationships in this uh, uncertain time among musicians? It's, it's incredibly important to me. Um, 
I just feel Nashville in general, just having been a musician, lived in several cities. I've lived in Miami. I grew up there and um, amazing musicians there, amazing musicians in Los Angeles, where I also lived. Um, Nashville's the third city I've lived in, but I really feel that they call Nashville Music City for a reason. Um, you know, we, we all just love each other here. There's, this is the land of collaboration and of love. And um, I check in with my musician friends from here and also abroad, really, just like in, in different states and, and globally. And just, hey, how are you doing? Um, it's okay to not feel okay today, you know. And for, for the most part, a lot of my musician friends, as, as well as myself, if they're writers, they're writing. If they're, they're playing, they're practicing. If they're players. Um, and, you know, and I think it'd be cool to to collaborate with a full band uh, online, I think throughout all this too. It's nice. And I feel like people need human connection right now more than anything. Mm-hmm. I think we all do. Yeah. I mean, we're so used to our communities. We're used to going to our, our churches or to going to concerts, to restaurants and just feeling that energy and, and feeling like we're a part of things. So I think right now the zoom chats, the Facebook lives, the Instagrams, I think it kind of, feels a little bit of that void right now so music um and staying connected with my music friends definitely helps me oh totally understandable and to take it back a little bit it looks like on world mental health day you released broken roses tell us about that song and what it means to you yes the broken roses um it was the first single off of shine and we shot a music video for it in nashville that's on youtube and you know i I co-wrote that song with my husband john carter cash kevin dunn and bill miller and what started off as just a piano ballad um, became sort of this exchange, like the visual of the broken roses and, you know, the excitement of a love relationship with them when the flowers are fresh and as something begins to deteriorate, it crumbles. And I, I had this visual in my head of these roses that were dried up, falling to the floor and someone stepping on them. So that's kind of like how it began, I guess, for like the lyric process for me. Um, yeah. and, you know, I really wanted to tell the story of the deterioration of a, of a love relationship. Something did happen to a friend of ours, um, that was very sad that I won't disclose his name or what happened, but, um, it kind of inspired me to finish the song, um, the lyrics of the song. And, you know, there's an explanation of a back and forth of like, you know, she, she did this, he felt this, he went away, she walked away, like she closed her eyes. There's a he and she constantly in the song and the symbolism of roses and for the video it's a very real portrayal it's not easy to watch you know it's it's not sugar-coated but it's it's a very real um take on what happens when substance abuse comes into a relationship and it, it starts to deteriorate and um when mental health problems take a hold of one partner wow that's so powerful and thank you and brave i mean we don't mental health is one of the least addressed subjects in music and in all of media. So for you to address that, for you to address that angle of, of something happening in a relationship, that is, I commend you. Thank you for doing that because we need to talk about it more. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, when I was taking the singles from the record, I was listening to all the songs and I, I said to myself, how can I help people? How could I be of service in some way through my music? What, what is the most important message to say right away, straight out the gate? And to me, Broken Roses was that message. And I partnered um, with an organization called change.org. Um, and I was a part of their panels online to, to kind of like help break the stigma and talk about different stressors in everyday life and anxiety. And, and really, I think I'm seeing a lot of organizations talking about it now. I'm seeing a lot more people speak up and not have a stiff upper lip about mental health issues and about what's bothering them. And I think even right now in a time when people feel so isolated and so alone or the opposite, they're stuck with a partner perhaps that is belittling them or abusing them, or like there's, there's a rise in domestic violence and abuse and emotional abuse. It's hard for people right now. So I think music is a great outlet for that. I think talking to a trusted person is very important. Um, and I just, I just believe in being positive as much as possible. We do too. And speaking of positivity, why don't we end this with a, a last question on something positive and looking ahead to when this is all through. 
What do you look forward to most about getting back out there and seeing fans and playing music? What do you look forward to most when this is over? Well, I, I, as far as a musician, I look forward to playing the live shows most definitely. Um, I, you know, getting that jazz record recorded with the studio musicians because I've, I've had to put that plan on hold. Um, you know, because so many people would need to be in the studio to track that live, but I want to track that live. I want to get out there. I want to meet um, the people that come to my shows. I want to go visit my, get on a plane and visit my mom and dad in Florida who yeah. are, you know, in their seventies and give them a huge hug. And my grandma who's 96. So I look forward to wow. just hugging, hugging close family and, you know, my sisters and nieces and nephews too. Yeah, and we hope you and your family are safe, and uh, hopefully we'll all be able to get out there soon and see concerts the way they're meant to be experienced, in person, not on a screen, and definitely not six feet apart from each other. Thank you, and I hope you guys stay safe and, and healthy, too. You know, we're we're all in this together, and, and it's not going to last forever, hopefully. No. So. <laughs> we'll get back to normal Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Anna Christina Cash. This was a true pleasure. Everybody, Shine is out now. It's another rare album because there's a lot of projects being delayed that has been released during this time for you to go and listen to. If you're tired of binging Netflix, go binge on music. Thank you, Anna. We <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for chatting with me. Absolutely. That was a fun interview, but it also, yeah. right at the end, when we stopped tape, I kind of got on my soapbox a little bit. So <laughs> yes, I'm going to expand on my soapbox because <laughs> you heard me on the on the tape thank her for mm -hmm. releasing her music um, during all of this. And right. I, I'm thinking to myself as I'm saying this, well, why aren't artists who have music plans releasing it? And the cynic in me says it's commercialism, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think they would sell more, and you'd sell more digital because everybody's at home. We want stuff to listen to. We want stuff to watch. Apple Music subscriptions are going up, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure Amazon Prime and Amazon Music subscriptions are going up. But they won't release the albums, and my feeling on it is probably because they can't do media, they can't go out and do concerts and sell concert tickets because nobody makes good money on the record deals anymore. Just mm -hmm. doesn't happen. The money's right. in the live touring. We know that. Right. And they won't release the music. But we're sitting here going, well, we can't come see you live. Why won't you release your music? And it's probably has to do with all of that on the commercial back end of it, that they can't follow through on the promotion and the touring mm -hmm. in the way that they would want. And I think that does a disservice to the fans. Yeah, I, I understand that side of it, but at the same time, now that concerts have kind of taken a new life form in the drive-in shows or, you know, even Facebook and Instagram Lives and things like that, and then now people are doing media appearances mm -hmm. in um, through Zoom and through Skype and, you know, obviously our show, things like that, uh, I, I think a lot of it has to do with they're not able to support it properly. Uh, but it also has to do with the fact that a lot of the pressing plants have been closed. And a, a lot of times, you know, artists and labels are out money if the albums don't sell. And they want to get it out there every way they possibly can. But, you know, several artists are still releasing music. They just delayed it. And then as things started to open back up, they finally put their albums back on the table while some still haven't yet. And some artists have even spoken out and said that, you know, $10 is too much right now to put out towards entertainment purposes and that they would just rather delay it till the economy is at least running a little smoother when people are back to work on a regular basis and not this open and closing type of situation that we've been in in the last several months. All right, well, for the Music Universe podcast, I'm Matt. And I'm Buddy. Thanks for listening, and keep checking out themusicuniverse.com for more news and reviews, and also follow us on social media. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever podcasts are heard, as well as YouTube. <laughs>